Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is December 10th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Uh, how has your journey with Jesus been this week? Are the embers in your soul burning a little bit brighter today than they were this time last week for the love of Jesus, for your hunger, for his word? Well, I pray that they are for you, friends. I pray that you're walking closer with Jesus than ever before and that you truly desire his fellowship and presence as you walk each moment throughout your day. Well, we're continuing our study in the story of the Bible, and today we find ourselves in a simple story, yet there's some very profound lessons that we can learn from this story. So let's begin in chapter 4, verse 1, and we'll discuss it as we move through the chapter. Now we are told Adam knew his wife Eve. Now this is just a very polite way of saying that Adam had sexual intercourse with his wife Eve. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Now she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of ground. Now I don't want to make too much out of this, but I find it very interesting that Cain was a tiller of the ground, but Abel was a keeper of sheep. Abel was a shepherd. He bore the quality of the Lord Jesus himself as shepherd of the sheep. Verse 3 says, Now over time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Now as far as we know, there was no command from God that his people should do this. And so what we can garner from this is the idea that Adam and Eve loved the Lord God so much, so deeply, and their reverence for him had been deepened because of the fall that took place in the garden. It was a constant reminder of his devotion unto them, and they saw him as the great and mighty, themselves as so weak. They saw him as the provider of all things. And so because of their deep love for him, their adoration for him, they wanted to give back something acknowledging the gratefulness in their hearts for all the good things that he did unto them. And they passed these things on to their children. They taught their children the importance of these things. And so Abel brings the best that he has, the firstlings of his flock and of all the fat thereof. And so because it was the best that he had, the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But notice verse 5. There's no indication that Cain brought the best of what he has. It says, but unto Cain and his offering, he did not have respect. And so Cain was very wroth. He was angry. He was dismayed and his countenance fell. And what that's basically saying is that you could look at Cain and you could tell that there was something that has brought his spirit low, the very look upon his face. And of course, that's true even today, friends. We can tell when someone's depressed. We can tell when someone's hurt. We can tell when someone's angry. The face and the expression on the face tell us a lot about a person. And it wasn't just others that could see that Cain's countenance had fallen, but the Lord God Almighty noticed that Cain's countenance has fallen. And so he says unto Cain, why are you burning with anger? Why are you wroth? And the Lord knew that he was angry with no one but God, yet he would vent it toward his brother because he was jealous that his brother had been received, yet he had not been received. If you do well, the Lord says in verse 7, shall you not be accepted? But if you do not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now notice that the Lord identifies sin in a person. He says, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be 
his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And of course, he's speaking of Lucifer, the fallen one. And so it's, it's Lucifer's desire to destroy you, Cain. And if you control your emotions, you redirect your focus, you can regain the peace that you once had. But if you allow this anger to fester, if you ponder on it, if you allow it to move into your heart, it shall become your master and you will be a slave unto it, not realizing what you have done until it's too late. And yet we see from verse eight that Cain didn't heed what God had instructed him. Instead, Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Now, we don't know what the course of the conversation that they had together, but whatever it was they talked about, Cain did not feel satisfied that they had come to a conclusion, and it only angered him more, and so he slew his brother and killed him. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And we see by the response of Cain what his perception of the Lord is. Because in speaking to the king of the universe, full of power, might, and authority, Cain says, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? Who would speak so sarcastically unto the Lord? And by speaking so, it shows that he simply does not know the Lord. Because if he truly knew the Lord, his heart would be bowed in shame and guilt and surrender, pleading and begging for mercy from the Lord. And I know it's true of you, but I can't tell you how many times that I've crossed paths with someone who has spoken so arrogantly, so defiantly, thinking that they have a right to question God, they have a right to blame God, and yet no matter how much they claim to know him, what they say reveals that they know him not at all. And that might even be true of things that you and I have said in the past as well. It was Jesus who said, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so if Cain had truly known the Lord, he would have never spoken in such a way. But he reveals that he has no knowledge of God simply by his sarcasm. I don't know where he is. Am I my brother's keeper? And so God said, what have you done? Do you remember that's the same thing he said unto Eve, Cain's mother? What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Now, because of what you have done, you are cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When you till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. In other words, I would rather die today than bear the weight of my punishment. Behold, O Lord, you've driven me out this day from the face of the earth. From your face shall I be hid, and I will be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone who finds me shall slay me. And so the Lord said, Therefore, whosoever slays Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Now, we don't know what that mark is, but it was definitely significant enough that anyone who saw him knew it was the hand of God upon him. And it was a warning that God had cursed him. And because the curse was so great, any who saw him wanted to distance themselves from him. And so Cain left the presence of the Lord. And he dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Now Cain knew his wife in the same way that we spoke about a while ago. Cain had sexual intercourse with his wife and she conceived. And she bare Enoch. And Enoch built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Now this is not the same Enoch that we're going to read about in chapter 5. Whom God took and he was no more. Because this Enoch, his father is Cain. But in 519, it says Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years. So the Enoch whom walked with God, his father was Jared. And so Cain bore Enoch, in verse 18, unto Enoch was born Irad. Irad begat Mahajael. Mahajael begat Methusael. 
Methusiel begat Lamech. Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of one was Ada, the name of the other Zillah. Ada bare Jabel. He was the father of such as dwell in tents and of such as have cattle. Now, this isn't extremely important, but it's certainly something to note. Jabel was the father of those who dwell in tents. Now, Jabel's brother's name was Jubal, and he was the father of all who handle the harp and organ, or the father of music. And they, Jabel and Jubal, had a brother named Tubal Cain. And he was an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. Or he was the father of forging metals. And their sister was named Nama. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, you wives of Lamech, hear unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. Now if Cain, who slew his brother, shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, who has slain someone himself, shall be avenged seventy and sevenfold. Now although Lamech acknowledges that he is going to be disciplined by the Lord, we're not told exactly from Scripture how that took place. For the story immediately reflects back to Adam and Eve, and in verse 25 we're told, Adam knew his wife again. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Now I certainly do not consider myself a historian, a biblical historian, and I find it just as difficult as you may to follow the lineage through the course of the pages of the Bible, through the course of history for the Israelite people. But I can tell you this, Seth is a very important figure because from Seth and his bloodline will come Noah. From Noah and his bloodline will come Ham. Ham will be cursed by God for an inappropriate act with his father. And from Ham will come someone who is, there's not much mentioned about in the Bible, yet he's a very key figure in the Bible, the man Nimrod, because he becomes the father of all pagan religions, specifically the Babylonian religions, and most specifically the false god Baal. And so we'll attempt to speak about this in later chapters. And if I've erred in my understanding in any way, please feel free to share in the description below because I certainly do not claim to understand all things. And so as we close our history lesson this morning, let's see what we can learn from this that will aid us and help us in our journey with the Lord Jesus. And I think the most significant lesson in this would be when God tells Cain, you are in control of your emotions. And if we do not control our emotions, they will cause us to do things and say things that are going to hurt people in ways that we can't even begin to comprehend. And once that damage is inflicted, even though the person may forgive us, a scar is upon their soul that can never be undone. And that's why Jesus told us in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, that those who allow their emotions, their anger to carry them to that point are in danger of hell fire. And so let us as the people of God learn to control our emotions, learn to remain calm in the most tense, heated situations, to be at peace and never to allow others to take us to a place where only shame, guilt, sorrow, and repentance dwell. Well, we're going to close there today, friends. I truly love you, and I'm so grateful that you're with us again. And it is my deepest desire that you are not only gaining in head knowledge through these times that we have together, but that you are gaining in heart knowledge, what it truly means to be a follower of the Lord Jesus. And because of that, you are becoming more humbled and surrendered each and every day as you seek to serve him so faithfully. Well, now, as he wills, friends, and until next time, I truly love you, and I'll see you on the next video.